Hey YouTube, POD7 here with a, another comic book haul video, and good god, it's been way too long. <laughs> uh, I think my last video was like eight months ago now. <laughs> Time flies so fast. Um, basically what's going on is my computer, the poor thing, it's from 2010, and its motherboard has been replaced once already, and I think that's the issue again, and that's why I've been having so much trouble uh, with corrupted video and stuff, and so um, in between the holidays and saving up for various things and paying bills and joining a gym, of all things, uh, I've been attempting to save up money for a new computer, but uh, it's just not in the cards at the moment. Uh, so it might be a while <laughs> before I get some new content up. I'm not even sure how well this is going to record, so anyway. Uh, this will be uploaded the day before Planet Comic Con in Kansas City, and uh, I will be there. And so I wanted to get this out before I piled on a bunch of more, a bunch more pictures to put in a video, because <laughs> there's like 140 pictures here. So, without further ado, let's power through these, because it's been so long, and there's so many that I don't have a story for every single one. And we're gonna start off with Catwoman this time. Okay, we have, I don't know why that bar is on the side of the screen there, but uh, Cat, Batman and Catwoman Trail of the Gun, book two. Uh, this one kind of sat under my nose in that uh, I picked it up at my local shop. It was in the graphic novel section together with book one for like five bucks when on Amazon book two by itself was going for nine or ten dollars with shipping, so uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of felt really silly having walked by that dozens of times probably by now. Uh, but yeah, pretty happy to get that picked up, and uh, just gonna scroll through these here. Nothing too huge to mention, uh, other than I'm within twenty issues. Yeah, twenty issues of having a complete. Catwoman in the title collection, I guess you could say. As far as I know, I've picked up every uh, Brave and the Bold with Catwoman. I've picked up all of her... Uh, I'm picking up all of her main solo series stuff. And of course the Batman and Catwoman stuff. So I should have everything, or pretty close to everything, uh, like I said in the last video, probably the Adam Hughes 51 cover is just going to be probably the last one I get. Uh, <laughs> I don't even really want to talk about this one, but it's a Catwoman comic, so I picked it up. That's basically all there is to it. Okay, now we're into some newer books. Uh, I've, I've followed Go Go Power Rangers one through four, I think, and the first issue was such a strong start that I actually added it to the poll that day when I picked it up, because I read it in the shop, and uh, that was a mistake. <laughs> Usually I wait like three issues, unless it's something like Batwoman or Detective Comics. Uh, I usually just pick it off the shelf for three issues, and if I still like it by then, then I add it to the poll, but... I don't know, something about the first issue really got me hyped about this book, and it just didn't turn out very well. Uh, and then, <laughs> tragedy after tragedy here. Uh, this is the last Wonder Woman book I picked up. Uh, it is the end of the transition team between Rucka and whoever's doing it now uh, that I didn't know about. <laughs> I didn't know that... Uh, Rucka's run had ended until I saw the preview for was either 31 or 32 when they were talking about Jason being back and uh, Scourge or whatever her name is, the the Apocalypse twin to Diana were back. And it was just like, why would they do this? <laughs> they made Wonder Woman so good with Rucka and then they decided to bring back two of the worst things to ever happen to Wonder Woman, basically. Besides, well, I'm not even going to get into it. It's, and 
the decision was justified because everything I hear about Wonder Woman now is that it is complete garbage in a dumpster fire, So, which is unfortunate. Uh, this is Wonder Woman Volume 3, Number 1. Pretty o- iconic cover. I just picked it up on the cheap. I think it was t- 2 or $3, something like that. And Batgirl, Birds of Prey. These covers are incre- incredible. The variants have been for the last couple ones. Uh, some of these are going to show up again later because of Batwoman. <laughs> she was in the manslaughter arc, as you can see most of the DC ladies were. So we'll be revisiting Batgirl, Birds of Prey. I was kind of worried when uh, Oracle, the new Oracle, quote-unquote, showed up. Uh, but from what I remember, he's gone already. So, <laughs> so uh, it's uh, it's pretty good. I like the... Uh, that they're hanging out with Catwoman and Poison Ivy uh, occasionally now. It's pretty nice. This issue was kind of strange. It had something to do with uh, Weather Wizard, if I remember right. And uh, I picked this up uh, mostly because of Poison Ivy wearing the New 52 costume there. <laughs> but uh, I had also heard that Batwoman was in this, but she's actually not. So... Uh, yeah. It's the kind of thing that, on a rainy day, if if I need to trade it in for credit or something at the store, I'll probably get some decent price out of it. Hopefully. Uh, which I, I've been thinking about doing more and more lately, but just buying comics for the sake of having more credit when I bring them back. But, uh, this was Batman the Drowned from, uh, DC Metal, or whatever it's called. Uh, I just thought it sounded cool. It's a female Batman, so... I mean, I'm obviously into Batwoman. And Batgirl, and all that. So I thought it would be cool to pick up and see what this take on the character was. And it's like... It is metal. (laughs) Like, in the heavy metal sense. It's pretty awesome. I tried to capture the lenticular nature of the cover. It didn't really turn out too great, but... Uh, this is a great character, and I hope she doesn't die in the arc. I don't even know what's going on with Dark Knight uh, Metal or anything like that. So, This was a variant, I believe, yes, of JL vs. Suicide Squad number three. I believe this is a Amanda Connor variant, which is awesome. She, she always, It always seems like she puts just a tiny bit more effort into Harley and Wonder Woman stuff. Um, but yeah, I just one of those uh, impulse buys uh, based on the cover. Basically, I didn't even read what was going on inside. So, Speaking of which, uh, this is a variant cover by an artist that goes by Art Germ. Uh, he's also Art Germ on Twitter, I believe. And he just does some incredible, uh, outstanding art. I've been following him... Since my 4chan days, I think, like almost nearly a decade ago, so he's been out there for a while, but uh, he's just now getting into like major publisher covers, I think, so I could be entirely wrong. He could have mar- worked for Marvel the last decade, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I thought about picking up all of his Super- Supergirl covers, but by the time I got around to considering it, they were already going for like $15 a piece, so... Uh, I snagged this one for cover price, thankfully, and maybe someday it'll be worth 20 30 bucks. Who knows? Uh, the, here's some stuff from Halloween Fest, or Comic Fest, some free stuff. These were really disappointing for the most part. Uh, this says Battle Angel uh, Alita, and then it has a Sailor Moon thing there, and each of those had two pages, and then the rest was a bunch of other stuff nobody cares about, so that was kind of annoying. But kind of a cool cover. I might have actually thrown this away, believe it or not. But uh, this was a pretty cool concept. I had, I had seen. I think it's Zombie Stripper is her name on the left there. She has a <laughs> unfortunately popular comic, probably. But uh, Black Betty was a really cool concept, and I really dig the story. It was just way too short, and everything else was advertising. I think it was like four pages long. So uh, I might pick up the trade for Black Betty once it comes out, uh, because 
the writing was pretty solid and the character was just an interesting idea. So, Grim Tales of Terror. Uh, I got it for the cover, obviously, and this character isn't even in the book from what I remember, so I think I threw it away too. These were all free, by the way. And I picked this up forgetting that uh, <laughs> Junji Ito scares the hell out of me. So uh, I'm pretty sure I threw this one away as well. I kept some of them, I promise. I kept this one, Lady Mechanica. Uh, this was a really great issue. It was a full issue, full story about uh, the lady going to a Mexican town to get away from whatever problems are ailing her in her main comics. And runs into a Dia de los Muertos celebration kind of thing. It was uh, pretty interesting. The character design is fantastic, as you can see from the cover, but inside it is really great too. The Mortal Instruments, the graphic novel. This was... Uh, uh, I've never... I've heard of Mortal Instruments, but I've never looked into it at all, and so it was kind of surprising. It's all black and white on the inside. I don't know if that was just for this, or if it's going to be full color later on. I don't know, but I kept this one as well. Uh, this is a super special uh, thing that's near and dear to my heart. <laughs> it's a webcomic called Band vs. Band. Uh, this is the first comic that I have followed for over a year that I've actually bought the physical copy of. I have the Princess Princess release, but that wasn't really a... a a continuously running comic. This one's been going on for six years now, I think, so I was super excited to get it, and I got a custom drawing inside, which was, I was expecting like a tiny little sketch, you know, and because uh, I think it was only $10 more to have it signed and with a sketch. So, so to have it be like half the page of the introductory page was super cool. And uh, she's been posting lately. Kathleen Jocks is the author's name. She's on Twitter, very active on Twitter. And uh, she's been posting lately a lot about uh, getting book two put together, which is really cool. I'm super excited for that. I might actually pre-order that. It's so good. So uh, I picked up Infinite Loop based off of Marguerite Bennett. Uh, her recommendation a long time ago on Twitter. And uh, I, I like had a picture of this cover on my phone for months and months and months and finally remembered to ask the, the shop owner if he could order it for me, either, either from Amazon or eBay or whatever. So I've been following that. Uh, the first six issue series was pretty wild. Uh, there's some pretty low points, but everything else is pretty fantastic. Uh, conceptually, there's, I'd say the low point is when a character actually, in the, in the word bubble, there's just a picture of Rage Face, or like, you mad, or whatever, and that was completely unnecessary, but <laughs> otherwise, it's been pretty good. Yeah, okay. And, uh, lots of parallel universe, time travel, like, it's a lot of high-concept sci-fi stuff, sort of through the lens of an action comedy. It's hard to explain, but uh, if you're into, like, timey, wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff, then uh, yeah, might be for you. And this is the first issue of the second series. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> my shop guy uh, either forgot or didn't realize this was the continuing saga of this series and wasn't putting it in my poll and so I had to pick this up off the shelf not even knowing it existed and so I'm missing issue two but I have issue three now so I'm waiting to read it I'm assuming it's going to be pretty good based on the last one. Oh, I have issue four sorry uh, now we're getting to some pretty random Marvel stuff uh, the first two here I think no Black Cat, number one, anyway, was a $1 purchase. He has dollar boxes at the store, so I had a lot of time to kill, so I went through every single one of them, basically, <laughs> and uh, picked up some number ones and uh, that aren't going to be worth anything. I just thought it was cool to have you know, the number one issue for certain 
uh, female characters. And this one I picked up, number five run of the new Runaways series, after watching Marvel's Runaways on Hulu, and it, the show was fantastic. Um, but yeah, definitely had to get it for the uh, Dinero or whatever the ship name is called, <laughs> the tease here for this because you know they got to tease it again now that it's actually happening in the show. Spoilers, but uh, surely everybody's seen it by now. It's been over a month, so uh, Silver Sable number one was also a dollar purchase. I <laughs> I recognize the name and I know that she was kind of a a sometimes friend to Spider-Man, but otherwise I didn't know anything about Silver Sable, so. Apparently there was demand for it, because it says in her own book, at last. Silver Sable and the Wild Pack, for all you Wild Pack fans out there. Now this is the, uh, <laughs> this is the trash section of this video, where uh, the dollar boxes were basically filled with Image and Dark Horse, comics and Valiant, I think. <laughs> and so a lot of these metallic uh, supremely, nearly borderline terminally anorexic women uh, got their own covers basically to sell the cover for all these comics. And uh, so I decided to pick up all the number ones I could find basically. <laughs> And they ranged from 25 cents to a dollar. So, and there's a lot of them. And boy howdy was there a lot of copies of some of the few specific ones. Obviously Angela is probably the most popular name that's going to be on here. She was a Todd McFarlane, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not. Evangeline, or Evangeline, excuse me. Never heard of her. Maximum Press, apparently. This was a Glory and Evan Evangeline crossover with a metallic cover. Oh, this might be the most notable name, actually, Barbed Wire, because of the Pam Anderson movie. But uh, I think this was the only Dark Horse comic in those boxes, from what I remember. But uh, anyway, Celestine, Foxfire, never heard of her. Helena from Lightning Comics, which was basically... Uh, it seemed like from the various, there was a lot of these issues, by the way, for Helena. And, uh, she seemed like a Lady Death ripoff, basically. Lady Supreme, a little bit more, uh, no notable, I should say, from Image. Lethal, also from Image. Maxi Mage. Riptide, I had heard of before because I was big into Fathom, even though I wasn't allowed to buy them as a kid. Uh, I was a big fan of the covers of Fathom back in the day, and this was, and this character was like, in that tricky way, it was like, hey, here's a character kind of like Fathom. So obviously, I wanted to pick it up, despite the hideous proportions <laughs> here, but uh, anyway. <laughs> and then Vogue was is another character that is probably fairly known to people who are hardcore into comics in the 90s. Uh, that should be the end of that. Uh, now we're on the miscellaneous section, which is stuff that isn't comics and might not even be superhero related at all. Uh, but I picked up the Question and Huntress chess pieces. All pretty interesting. Gotta have all three of them setting together. And uh, I like to think this is kind of like short people problems on Twitter would relate to this. <laughs> That's how I was originally displaying them until Batwoman fell over and her head came off. So now she's on a much sturdier uh, surface, as you'll see near the end of this section, I believe. Yes, right here, actually. <laughs> Maybe not near the end. Uh, yeah, all my Batwoman stuff, except for the action figures, are out. All my Kotobukiya stuff is out. I put uh, Kiss Shots statue in there just because it felt weird having one statue somewhere else. And uh, the Poison Ivy Hush figure was extremely disappointing. She was missing a peg hole in her left foot, I believe, and the pegs didn't even fit into the base, so I just shoved her back in the box and hit her in the back there until I could 
pick up another one someday and replace her and never take her out of the box. It took forever to get her out of the box just for the first time without tearing the box. So it was a huge waste of time all around, basically. I picked up Batman Gotham by Gaslight. Of course, I'm a huge fan of the line, even though the quality isn't that great these days. And unfortunately, this movie also carried that on carried on that tradition, in my opinion. Uh, lots of questionable decisions as far as use of characters, in my opinion. Uh, but they they tried <laughs> uh, to recreate Mignola, Mike Mignola's style. And uh, the voice cast was great, except for Tara Strong doing a really cartoonish, over-the-top Harley Quinn voice for an old woman, which was probably more of a mistake on the director's part than hers, I imagine, because she could probably do a really good defeated old woman voice. But uh, yeah, I'm not a fan, and not really a fan of (laughs) the preview for the next movie either, but I'll let people look for that on their own. And added to the Magnet Collection, we got Jessica Cruz and Cassandra Cain in her old Bat- Batgirl costume. And so now we have a total of that many <laughs> magnets. Uh, I've got the Birds of Prey there by each other, of course. Um, yeah, it's uh, coming along. I, I don't ask uh, the shop owner to make any for me. I just feel like it's more fate when I find them up on his wall. And uh, that also keeps me from asking him to make me 50 Batwoman magnets, basically. So, uh, this was from Pokemon the Movie, I Choose You, which was the 20th Pokemon movie. I went and saw it in the theater. And, uh, yeah, it was disappointing, but it was still a cool experience to be there in a packed theater. And uh, I picked this up with the points I got just from that visit alone, uh, which was pretty crazy. I saw, I think I saw this and um, the the foreigner was Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan in the same day, and so I had enough points to buy this uh, art poster or art print, excuse me. Uh, obviously, it's a, nu- a numbered print, so that was pretty cool to get that on time. And of course, you got to get the card with the with the movie ticket. Ashes Pikachu probably not worth anything, but still kind of cool to have with the poster. I uh, picked up Your Name. I don't know if I've gotten to mention this movie at all, but uh, yeah, this if you have ever enjoyed any anime at all, and you're too embarrassed to go back and watch like Dragon Ball or Naruto or something, and you want something more serious or adult like a.k.a. more acceptable. Uh, Your Name is about as close as it's going to get for the next couple years, I think. Uh, Just an incredible film. Uh, Mikoto Shinkai is one of the best directors, period, at the moment, (laughs) in my opinion. But uh, uh, it's incredible that he hasn't been talked into doing any live action yet because his, uh, his pacing and his... Uh, atmosphere building is just incredible, like next level stuff. So, uh, go out of your way to see any of the movies he's ever made. I would recommend all of them. And this is my poster collection. These are all uh, movies I saw in the last, well, I guess it'd be the last 18 months now, but uh, prior to that, besides the first uh, film of Kizu Monogatari. So, I just had a I had started a collection, basically, and decided to actually put them together. Uh, as you can see, I have so- the po- posters for Silent Voice, which was also a really good movie. You should go out of your way to see. Unfortunately, uh, the Oscars are garbage, and they voted for stuff like Boss Baby to be nominated, because they that was the movie they had heard of before. And uh, because... The people that are in the Academy and make that stuff, make the nominations, they don't actually watch the movies. They just go by what they've heard, especially in the animation category. I've probably covered this before, but basically you can you can actually see leaked uh, ballots where people said, was 
they like write in the things that don't even need to watch this to know it's bad and stuff like that. And uh, I've never heard of this one, and it's just so terrible. But yeah, uh, it's not like Crunchyroll's awards are any better most of the time. At least it wasn't last year. I haven't watched this year's, but uh, yeah. If it looks good to you, watch it. Is my creed decree for any kind of movie or TV show. Don't you can be informed by people you know and trust, but at the end of the day, if you want to watch it, just watch it and decide for yourself if it's bad or not. So, off of that now, <laughs> back into comics. Mother Panic, apparently they're doing an event called the Milk Wars right now, and uh, it's basically going to push the entire young animal print five years into the future, or something or uh, something along those lines. And uh, so it's kind of kind of going to flip the script on what I've been what I've come to know as Mother Panic, which I'm, I'm not quite sure how I feel about yet, but it's. It's interesting of note because, end of note, because uh, Mother Panic's special is with Batman, uh, which is pretty huge for her character. And uh, I kind of wish I had kept up with Shade the Changing Girl because she has a special with Wonder Woman, which is incredible. But uh, yeah, it should be interesting to see where it goes. It's going to be Mother Panic AD, I think, from now on. I can't remember, but I have to remember to tell... Um, the comic shop guy about that. Anyway, uh, Impulse Buy, again, Raven, Daughter of Darkness. It's another miniseries. If, you know, if they would just throw a serious writer and a serious artist with big name impact, they could probably get an actual series going, but no, they're just kind of going to test the waters every time with Raven from now on, I guess. Mystic U... I wanted to support anything with Zatanna in it because it seems like she's, ever since Justice League Dark has gone by the wayside, she's just not around from what I can tell. And uh, this is actually a uh, not a mainline canon book. It's just kind of a reimagining of Zatanna and some of the mystical figures in DC as uh, college students, basically. And Zatanna is going into it not knowing anything about magic. Only what her dad showed her as a performance magician. So, uh, first issue was really cool. It felt like uh, it felt like a TV show, really. <laughs> and then the second issue was just very bizarre. And uh, it had Queen Bee in it, which was pretty interesting. But otherwise, it felt like it wanted to be four or five different stories and just never really cohesively came together at the end. And, uh, yeah, now we are on to, yep. Okay, so this is the beginning of the Batwoman section already. Wow. And this picture is showing, I believe, October or November, uh, every appearance from Batwoman in those months. And it was, I'm pretty sure it's the most appearances she's ever had in a single month. So one, two, three, four... And five, counting the Comic Fest uh, reissue, which is incredible. Usually it's like Injustice, Bombshells, and Batwoman back in the first volume. So I think that was the most she was ever in, from what I remember. But yeah, I was just, <laughs> I took this picture because I was impressed, basically. I picked up Rough Justice, uh, sketches by Alex Ross, and I had heard that this was originally a redesign for Batgirl, but I didn't know that it was going to be after she goes through the Lazarus pit and she's meant to be sort of a more darker, villainous-looking change to her because once you go in the Lazarus pit, you go a little bonkers. So, uh, But instead, she was repurposed into something much better than, than that, thankfully. I am digging the uh, the logo design, though. It's pretty sick. I, I don't know why I'd never seen this book anywhere before, because it was a really interesting uh, book, especially if you're a big fan of Ross. So Yeah, just 
amazing. It would be awesome if uh, he did a, another book. Like, I would, I would love to see, because he's done, like, Justice, and he did Kingdom Come. It would be awesome to just see him do a Gotham-only book with Gotham characters. Because I think he would really do great justice um, uh, to many of the characters and the character designs. So, yeah, like that's the closest you're going to get to a Kingdom Come Batwoman, basically. Or Kate Kane, I guess, because there was a Batwoman in Kingdom Come. But And then we move on to Nightwing, the New Order. I don't know if this was canon or not. It was. It's kind of a near-future story about uh, Dick and Starfire's child uh, being immune to a cure for superpowers, basically. And uh, so he's fighting to save his kid's life while also fighting with the fact that he's the reason the cure exists in the first place after Batman was killed, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I started in, volume, uh, in issue three, obviously, so... Yeah. Um, I guess I forgot to include... Oh, no. Kate's on the cover, so of course I didn't include a picture there. But here's what she looks like as Commander Kane leading... She's basically the leader of the colony and the leader of the section that monitors uh, former villains and heroes and makes sure they're not trying to get their powers back kind of thing. Which, of course, involves Superman, who has lost his powers. Even though he's a Kryptonian, it should be... <laughs> His physical nature, but whatever. <laughs> Comics aren't perfect, so. <laughs> and then I've got a huge haul of Injustice, or at least it feels huge. I'm going to kind of scroll through them because I've said everything that needs to be said about Injustice, in my opinion, so. I mean, just look at that word bubble. My goodness. Yeah, so. She. Apparently, I'm not the only one that believes that she's not. She might not actually be dead, but considering the fact they haven't brought her back in uh, Justice or Injustice Ground Zero or whatever the new series is called, I doubt she's coming back. I, just, I really love this panel, by the way. It's one of the best-looking panels in the series. Of course, I picked up the Comic Fest free special edition um, Night of the Monster Men issue because it has Kate, Kate on the front. So, uh, Batman Eternal. The year-long storyline and uh, just some harmless flirting in between two Bat family members. Nothing wrong here. But I really liked the, uh, I don't even know if my cursor is visible, but I like the sculpture, like the musculature going on in here. Like this is definitely the whole painted on thing, but it still looks good, you know, <laughs> in my opinion. So, Yep. Always good. I don't know what happened. I feel, it almost feels like there was a order from on high to not use Harbor Row anymore. Maybe because of this storyline. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's Batwoman again. Here she is again. This would be a great team up all the time. Cass, Kate, Dinah, and Barbs. Or Babs. <laughs> Barbs. But, you know, we only saw it again in Birds of Prey. And I don't think Cass really had much going on in that issue, or that story arc, so... It's kind of a shame, but, you know, whatever. It's always cool to see them together. Ragman, obviously, she has history with Ragman, although it's been erased, <laughs> thankfully, from canon. And this is, she's kind of the new gatekeeper for Gotham heroes, as she was the first one to confront Mother Panic, and now she's confronting Ragman here, as he's beating... Uh, beating up some demons, I think. <laughs> uh, this was the only one she appeared in, from what I know, so... Yeah, I didn't pick up any more. <laughs> uh, Red Hood and the Outlaws. They could they could have done so much more with Kate. <laughs> and Jason Todd. Uh, especially now, uh, which we'll get to later, but uh, I think Jason and Kate would get along very well. Um... Yeah, she's on the cover, so I didn't bother taking a picture. This one is kind of controversial as far as my collection goes because it's Batman and the Signal, but I'm not sure if this appearance is a dream or if it's a flashback because he talks in it like it's a flashback. I don't know. You'll have to tell me. 
But uh, that's definitely Kid Kane. It's not like that comic where Batman is shown fighting a bunch of the Bat family and it turns out they were all spiral agents dressed up like the Bat family. That kind of screwed me up for a second. And we're back with Birds of Prey. Uh, here she is in 14, and then not too long after, she's back. Literally the next issue. So definitely not too long after. Uh, this is going long, so I'm, I really want, tried. I promise I tried to make this short. But uh, as you know, I ramble on. So she was in for three issues, four issues straight if you count 14 which is pretty awesome. Maybe she'll have a home there once uh, she gets kicked out of Detective Comics and her solo book gets cancelled, unfortunately. Because it's... It, <laughs> anytime a book gets super good that I'm following, it's going to get cancelled immediately, pretty much. So, Bombshells United has uh, turned for the worse. It's just uh, not that great. I don't know what it is about it to me, but I don't really have any interest... <laughs> Even though it's now Batwoman focused almost exclusively for the last couple issues, it's just, uh, it's not interesting. The story they're going with, she stumbles upon uh, Black Adam looking for a Lazarus pit and finds Talia al Ghul protecting one. And while she's there, she finds out Cheetah has been there. And she's trying to repay all the things she's done. So she looked for Jason's body and brought him back to life, which uh, informed Black Adam of where the pit was because he can sense the magical energies that it used to bring Jason back to life. So, yeah. <laughs> One of those things. I love this cover. I would read 10 issues of. Batwoman and Catwoman just hanging out in the Mediterranean in this universe. It could be the, the When in Rome ver bombshells edition for all I care. I would get every copy and probably every variant too. And then Detective Comics. Boy, this has been a pretty crazy year for this book. Um, Kate has had a great run in it. Uh, <laughs> As you can see, just absolutely slaying. And, uh, but yeah, Tim Drake was definitely a focus. I knew that uh, once I started following James Tynan on Twitter, because that's all he talked about. Everybody would ask him who his favorite Robin was, and it would just be Tim Drake every time. So I figured there would be something huge coming out, especially when he killed, seemingly killed off Tim Drake. So, yeah. Uh, the payoff for that happened, and now we're getting into the repercussions of that, and uh, the victim syn syndicate is back, obviously, and they're messing with Clayface. Yeah. Kate is amazing, as usual. This is a wonderful cover. <laughs> I love it. It says, will she pull the trigger? Well, <laughs> if you're following along, Clayface is on a rampage. And uh, she has the opportunity to shoot, and yeah, at the end of 973, she does. She straight up kills Clayface, as far as we know, dot, dot, dot. And uh, this is the annual for Detective Comics, and if you're going to pick up any annual just for the heck of it, pick up this annual. It's honestly, I can't even think of another annual besides like Gotham by Gaslight or no that was in Elseworld so yeah I'd, I'd, I think there was a JSA annual back in the early 2000s that I really enjoyed but the fact that I can't even remember what happened in it should tell you <laughs> but uh, yeah this is an amazing annual and yeah, it definitely felt it's the most like Batman the Animated Series Clayface that Clay Clayface has been since that series went off the air. It was incredible. I can't think of enough superlatives to say about this uh, issue. So definitely go out of your way to pick it up. And now into the hard, straight line, hardcore Batwoman stuff. I finally picked up an original hardcover edition of Batwoman Elegy which was pretty awesome. And of course, as always seems to happen right when I'm 
ordering a Batwoman trade. There's a new Kaze-san volume, so I picked that up. This was a very special pickup. It's Batwoman number zero, the original number zero, with the Amy Reader variant cover. For the longest time, everywhere I looked, $30, $30, $30, $30, $30, plus $30 plus shipping, you know, and I was like, I just can't. It's not, it's not like, it's not going to be the centerpiece of my collection or anything, so I, I really felt like $30 was too much. It's not like uh, Gotham City Sirens number one, where I paid $40 in store credit, I think, for the uh, graded edition of it <laughs> at a 9.2 or whatever it was. But, uh, yeah, just uh, I've wanted this ever since it came out, basically, and could never find it for anything cheaper than 30 And then finally there was an eBay listing for $10 with free shipping, of all things, and it had one hour left. And so I just b bought it right then and there. It had zero bids, which was incredible to me. <laughs> like, what in the world? But anyway, yeah, it's just a... I think it's a, one of the more iconic covers for Batwoman so far, and she's had some pretty incredible covers. And some more variants from uh, Series 1, or, excuse me, Volume 1. Uh, just these black and white sketch repurposed prints, basically. Got three of them. And then some more from Volume 2. Uh, there's actually normal and variant prints here that I picked up. Uh, a lot of people are seem to be wishy-washy on Batwoman. Uh, her solo series and in Detective Comics. It's uh, kind of a weird time to be a fan because it seems like a lot of the things she's being accused of doing in detective comics and like people saying they're making her a villain now it's like people do this all the time in comics everywhere like deathstroke the terminator is a hero now <laughs> like what is killing one character who's probably not even dead because he's thousands of gallons of clay killing that one character was enough to make her a supervillain apparently it's just I don't know, I haven't read 974 yet, so I guess I should hold judgment, but yeah, I guess a lot of people are talking that she's a new, she's going to be the new villain going forward, and I just, I just can't see it. I can't see James Tynan doing that to Batwoman uh, after the way he talked about Batwoman in the Facebook Q&A a couple of years ago. Uh, this storyline, a lot of people aren't liking because it seems like Kate goes up and down in terms of character, like, emotions and stuff, but the whole point is she's on drugs for half the half the story arc, so of course she's going to be erratic. And then this was kind of a break issue for Marguerite. Uh, I, I believe there's, like, a guest writer here, and it's just kind of catching you up on what has been going on with Julia Pennyworth, who, of course, gets abducted by Professor Pig. And, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it definitely feels like it's coming to a head. You can tell the last couple pages were uh, deeply advised by Marguerite to set up issue 12 and going forward from there. So uh, it's, a, it's a really interesting setup, and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where it goes. Hopefully <laughs> it goes much, much longer. I would hate for Volume 2, as good as it is, to be canceled before 15 or something like that while... They let Mark on and Draco's uh, abomination run happen at all. So, yeah, if if we can get two years of Batwoman Volume Two, that would be more than I would have ever dreamed of, honestly. So, of course, I would prefer to have her forever, but uh, it's if Catwoman can't even keep a sustained audience, I can't imagine Batwoman keeping one. So. We'll see, though. I believe that's the last picture. Thank goodness. I'm sorry for keeping this going so long, everybody, but hopefully it's not too terrible. I'm going to chop it up a little bit in editing if it's not completely corrupted after I record this. So thanks for sticking around if you have, and thanks for watching. This has been POD7. Uh, actually, before I sign out, uh, I'll try to take as many pictures as I can of the convention and post a shorter video in the next week, probably. 
Uh, so yeah, <laughs> look forward to that if you liked this. If you like my comic book discussion, I'm gonna meet Marguerite Bennett. That's the main goal of going to this convention. She's gonna be there, and I'm gonna get her to sign Batwoman Rebirth number one. So pretty ecstatic about that. I uh, wouldn't drive eight hours round trip for nobody. <laughs> it has to be somebody of her status in my eyes, I guess is how I'll put that. But Anyway, uh, thanks again for watching and for sticking around with me through months and months of zero content. Uh, this has been POD7, and I'm signing off.